Watch Commander. <laughs> watch Commander. We're watching Baba here, Furry, and we're watching it pull back from five points off the highs from a couple of days ago here. Where do you think That's Ali because Baba's you guys going? keep on telling it, it is so high. <laughs> you know, if these pundits quiet down and go work for a living, why can't we be left alone? We do what we are supposed to do. Murray, what can I tell you? <laughs> You're back. Well, Murray, Fire's Murray. Back. And then we hit at something down the you know, bullseye. Murray comes back, and that's all he wants. He got paid twice. He got paid going in. He got paid going out. Now he wants every trade to be like that. Unbelievable. So what, what are your thoughts here on to? Alibaba? What are your thoughts here on Alibaba? Joel's saying he's thinking this is starting to look toppy. I think it's just a pullback here, and this thing's going to be a lot higher in a month. What are your thoughts on Alibaba? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it seems to me that I was a little bit tired last time, but you forgot your coffee last time. You asked me exactly the same question, and what did I say, young man? I said, I need data. My charts are empty. Still remember, we, I need volatility. I need bands. I need... So many things. Nothing shows up yet. So I'm I'm blind on Baba yet. It's I can't not do it. good enough to have three weeks or four, or to have a couple months. No, of data. no, 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 sir. Not the way we trade. Not the way we trade. Uh, you know, you, we all have our own styles. Let me go back there again. Hold on. I mean, FB is coming in good now. Okay. Uh, Twitter. Uh, yes, it's coming in okay. Alibaba. I have two months of data. Three months of data. If you want to count the weeks, one, two, three, four, five. Nine weeks. I can't do anything with nine weeks. The dailies are beginning to show some bands, but only one way, straight up. Because we've been just expanding. So your guess is as good as mine. What about Twitter? What are you saying about Twitter? Because uh, we finally took out that $40 level that we've been leaning on there for the last week. And we closed down here at 39.59. It's down here a little bit in the pre-market again at 39.44. What are your thoughts on Twitter? Uh, if it's still at negative one sigma, I like to see uh, a flush. Uh, talk to me around uh, below thirty six, but above thirty two. One thing about at that point, I'll be interested. So so far, it's a negative one, negative two sigma. Well, as you know, when it gets into this band, it's it's like a yeah, it's going to a water park. You're coming down the, the slide. The slide. It's just going to slide for a while. You must have heard us talking about SeaWorld earlier. Uh, well, one thing I wanted to point out in Twitter, uh, there were a bunch of lows at 40 and busted through there. Uh, but, what, yeah, what ended up happening, though, is, you know that gap that you had from uh, the July earnings, the gap and gap? Uh, late, uh, late July, 1st of August. Yeah, yeah, they filled it almost by, they filled it by $0.08. Cents, and I was away from my computer when we did that. That I've uh, been waiting for. Were that. you chasing the soup? I was. I know. I I got all the soup that uh, I ate. All I the see. soup yep. that, that that you sent me, Fiery. Uh, okay. But uh, you know, it filled the gap. I like to see it holding here this area for a couple more days. I don't think this thing gets back to thirty six. You don't think so? You think it will level out here? Yeah. Yep. I do. Oh, we'll watch it. We'll watch it. I'm just going by historically how these bands operate, and obviously. This is a momentous event, and you completely covered that gap. That was a huge gap, as you know. Yes, it was, and it took a long yeah, we, time we to We went do to it. four sigma. We went to four sigma. Again, this is the kind of stuff we want to look at because it's measuring itself against itself. On Bubba, you know, we have uh, nine weeks of data. It's way too early. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at... Uh, did you see that move in Priceline yesterday, just kind of out of nowhere? I guess maybe. No, we've never traded that. We've never traded Priceline. I don't know. It keeps on getting higher and higher. Of course, it came down to, uh, well, it's down two now, but yeah, I see the two days in a row popping, trying to fill that gap. Yeah. You see the gap from uh, like a week ago? Earnings gap, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, dropped yeah. 100 yeah. points on the earnings report. It's got three quarters of the loss back here now in two days. It's an incredible move for Priceline here. 70 points well, in two days. You know, uh, th we're going to add this. Li we, I want to address something here. You just brought something up. I made a tweet last night saying, I promise. So come on to pre-market show uh, with Dennis and Joel. I'm going to talk about our Amazon trade. Okay, let's do we've it. We've come up well, we've, we've come up in a way, and now maybe given that, Priceline could be added to that list of how to do. And simply, and if you want, I'll continue talk, speaking about it. It's how you trade a, a high flyer 
which you don't know which way it's going to break. Okay? You don't know it's going to be long or short. Okay? And we, you do it with three trades. Two of them together, because one of them is going to miss. One of them, the two spreads. You hit one, you're going to miss the other one. You wait three days, look forward to repair the second one. So, give, and, if, and we just did that with Amazon. We did uh, the, the, the call spread and put a spread. The call spread missed, the put spread was bingo. We waited three days, we set up a new call spread. That paid for the call spread we missed. So you can't lose. Win win. Just look what at else it, is yeah. on your radar here, Fari? We're just looking here at the S&P futures pulling back eight points. This is a big pullback here. You got some stocks on your radar? Well, not individual stocks, but uh, we, we, we did take off some money off the table. Amazon was one of them. We also took off Tesla a little bit. Was not responding well. Uh, we have been calling about take some money off the table. We've kept some uh, puts on, like IWMs, Decembers. Uh, we have, uh, as, as you all know, this, this uh, run-up was unprecedented. And so uh, we, we've been calling for a possible uh, slow pullback because we've come up so much high. And, you know, we hit, uh, I don't know, 260 on uh, uh, my, my, my oscillator. We're at 136 right now. A little pullback is very healthy. We should see that. But I would just play the indices. Much easier. Volatility is a little bit lower, and no one person can move it around higher than Apple. Again, one thing I hate about this market, if you notice, the market is moving where Apple is. Up tick, down tick, up tick, down tick. It is, it's not a good market when they can uh, you know, manipulate one stock and the whole market moves. But at least you got lower volatility trading the indices or ETFs than the individual names that get surprised. Uh, but we, we've been expecting a pullback. We, we're getting adjusted that way our portfolio. Also, I'll be taking a week off, a week of Thanksgiving. So I'm slowly easing off on the positions, make sure we enter into the option positions. So we don't have anything catastrophic sitting out there because I do not plan to trade during my time off. Yeah, and, uh, wow, we'll, we'll miss you on the show that week. I just wanted to point out in uh, Amazon, uh, Ace pointed out that uh, Nick made a good call on it yesterday as far as not shorting it. Uh, you know, good call, uh -huh. sometimes figure out what not to do. But uh, you had a nice gap fill there. You had a 311.40 uh, gap down on uh, the earnings day, and uh, right. it filled. It actually filled that gap. When, uh, exactly. It went back to where it was. Textbook. Exactly. Uh, uh, we, we got that 3.12. We, it, it was nice. like some sort of mistake. I put two trades to exit, Amazon and Tesla. Tesla got filled instantly. We were like half an hour was out. A downtown had something to do. Came back. My order for Amazon was not steady. was not being executed. I don't know why. It just didn't seem to even be there. It was, it was interactive. And I said, what's going on? Look at the price. Jeez, we're even higher. So I, I think I took 10 cents, 15 cents extra. Came out. No complaints. Thank you. And this was the third leg, you know, the, the third spread that paid for the leg that didn't work. So. Okay, good. Good risk-reward. And uh, uh, Tesla's trying to fill a gap as well here. Disappointments over the D. Need to get to 254.40 to fill that gap in Tesla. Yesterday's high, 51.82. Uh, you did mention Apple. We're, we're at 50 bar. We're at 50 bar. And right above it, you got three sigma. So I don't know if it's going to go much higher. And uh, that in mind. what about yeah. what about Apple? I mean, you did say, you know, to go pretty much tick for tick for the market, though. What do you make right. of this, uh, you know, really this consolidation in tight ranges, I'd say, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trading sessions? It's very difficult. Day trading is very difficult. The excitement is gone. That's what, actually, I'm more and more relaxed. If you know, there, were, there were days I didn't know how uh, 6.37 in the morning became 4 p.m., it was just so much was going on. No lunch. Just order in lunch and stay by the screens. I usually take, like to take a break and go out and you know, smell the roses, uh, walk out in the you know, fresh air and all that. It was just one thing after another. But, uh, uh, you know, the, again, uh, the reversal was huge. Uh, it was not from the levels we thought. For the strength it showed, of course, it's all rear view mirrors. Uh, you got to trade the market that's given to you. You cannot pick the market. Um, our systems begin getting long kind of midway 
because we're still in that uh, consolidation of the volatility, and it came down and pulled back up, and then it took off. But as you know, as we started hitting new highs, the range has collapsed. It was a rush to get to new highs, and now the range has collapsed. Intraday trading is very difficult. Uh, I usually trade now uh, maybe a couple of trades first hour and wait for the last hour. You think- Otherwise, you're going to feed the uh, brokers and market makers. It's what's called a sausage, you know. It's a, it's a, a Chicago style. It's just all kind of sausage operation. Uh, the excitement of October is gone. And I see it in the, uh, some of the comments. Uh, Ethan, Ethan is very upset with this market. Like, we need some volatility. I said, I know, I know, but it's not there. And, and seasonality. We're heading into an area where it gets less and less. It becomes a one-way ticket to the top. So watch out for exogenous news. Just when you thought things are safe, they're going to change it on you. So watch out for something to change this. What is it out there? Maybe it's not Putin. Maybe it's something else. But watch out. Look where oil is going. Did you see a 7750 uh, print? What are your thoughts here on oil? Where is oil going? Because we've been trying to put in a little bit of a bottom here in the 76 handle there. But what are your thoughts overall on oil? Six oh. We started in August. It was on your program. It was played back many times. It was on the stocks and jocks. 60 in 18 months from August. So we're looking at Q1 2016 to be around the 60. And here's the reason. Iran and Putin. We're negotiating with them. I believe there's a deal with the Obama and House of Saud. Because what? they could have cut back. Why are they not cutting, cutting back? Saudis are not cutting back. Tell me why. With all this glut, it's pushing Iran into during the negotiation in addition to the sanctions. And uh, with Putin. Putin. Putin said at 80, this war is coming to an end. He, said, he gave a speech that said that. Well, we're at 77. We'll talk at 75. Talk to you at 70. And all the people who went long on oil, I don't know. Maybe they ought to refresh, and refresh their resume. If oil starts going down to 60 and getting this cheap, how does that affect yeah. the alternative energy stocks like your solar or not even? Done. Or just looking at- done. At least it'll be sidetracked. Your, also, your oil services will be done. Look at Slumberger, Halliburton. That's what, look, look, there's so many people in the south, in, in Texas, they're selling the leases. Oh, there was one guy who tweeted, uh, tweeted to me since he was just coming back from the Texas. Gray beard selling. Okay, that's experience. Those people who've been around. What They're about selling the leases? What does it tell you? We have a glut. We have too much. Um, the, the, because of fracking. Fracking has worked. Okay, fracking has been successful. It's technology. It's not Obama for, um, or, uh, energy policy. He has none. It is the te- technology, good old technology of the U.S. coming back to save us. So look what it's doing to airlines and consumer. Why do you think Amazon is hiring 80,000 temporary workers? Walmart is getting 60,000 because they expect it's going to be a spectacular holiday season. Why? Discretionary uh, uh, expenditures. You're going to have more money in your pocket. If you have an SUV, which a lot of people do here in Chicago, they're paying a lot less to fill in their their, their tanks. So they'll they'll put that into gifts and all that. So there's a shift. There's a shift here. Look at airlines. Yeah, that's so. Are you bullish the airlines? If you think oil's going to sixty, you got to be bullish the airlines, right? I am. I am. I am. But I don't. Typically, I don't play airlines as a rule. Uh, Gecko. You know, I don't. I don't like the unions and fuel costs can kill you. This time, fuel cost is lower. But this is Obama times. It's union time, so we'll see. It's selectively, maybe love, you know, Southwest, I like that. Um, JetBlue, yeah, the, the independence I like. The big behemoths like UA, forget it. Hey, Fari, I wanted to ask you about the elections there. You got a Republican governor now in yeah. Illinois. Uh, any uh, any yes. thoughts on the elections? And uh, they're, what they're- uh, we, we, As I said to my Democratic friends that... Uh, he, this is going to be his second shellacking, but he got it. Boy, this one was big. So, uh, look, the, the, the failed policies and also not, nobody working together because the, the, the difference was so huge. Um, of course, in certain states, issues were much, much bigger, like Illinois. Uh, and there were a lot of bad, uh, bad uh, 
Well, because there was a lot of um, nasty campaigning, too. The messaging was very nasty. All kinds of accusations and so forth. Uh, and also the turnout was so low. Turnout was so low. Uh, a good, good example was what got, the day after Stephanie Cutter, deputy chair, a deputy chair of the campaign for Obama. She's always uh, super confident and she's got a command of a language and so forth. On CNN, she and also on uh, uh, Meet the Press, she was mumbling. She didn't know what to say. When that happens, you know the schlacking was heavy. You know they're hurting. So. Hopefully, hopefully, will somebody like Jeb Bush comes in and uh, will clean house uh, in 2016. All right, we're going to throw one political question for you here from Rob Hood. Thoughts on sure. the Obamacare architect who wasn't forthright? Um, <laughs> I too much detail. I don't know. I, I'm just yeah, a, okay. just way above my pay grade there. Okay. Do not know. Um, but I would say um, we're going to spend a lot of time again. And the new Congress going after cleaning up Obamacare, whether it's right or wrong. I think there are some parts of it that are useful. For example, make it portable, you know, and also have existing conditions. Um, th those I think any society needs. It makes the jobs more portable. And, uh, but there are some areas also, the costs haven't gone down. Look at the cost the projections for next year, and their own data shows they're going to be less signups. So without knowing too much about it or getting too much detail, I think we're going to be possibly even wasting some time in the next Congress going back and forth on it, given the mission of the two sides. Okay, before we let you go, Fari, I just want to ask you about Facebook here. And I'm just, I mean, okay. it had to drop after, uh, you know, after the earnings were good. I guess the guidance you could say is a little weak. You, got a li you know, you had the gap down. You got the triangle forming here. Uh, I know you're making good on some calls on uh, Facebook. What, right. uh, what? I mean, what are you looking at here in Facebook? Well, I, I'm going to be adding. Our system just went to a buy. Uh, it last night it went to a buy last night. Uh, we were at the negative one sigma, but holding. Uh, we got our shellacking. That was my shellacking, FB, of, of this season. The one I missed really was uh, FB. Uh, I still have them on the books, but they're not worth much. But I will uh, now go into a new set of uh, uh, strikes and different times, of course. And just like we did, as I, as I declared, the, the, the moment the data came out, I said, we're going to do what we did with Twitter back in Q2. Remember how I got, I got yep. my butt kicked on Twitter like April? Yep. And I set up the June, July, August spreads, and they all came back. So... You know, sometimes it pays to trade the same name because you really pay attention to the behavior. And you, you kind of get it, what it's supposed to do. Our system went to a buy. I'm not saying I'll jump in there tomorrow or today, but I'm still looking. Um, and we've been pretty much level. If you notice, we've been in a very tight range since the EPS. That's huge gap down. Uh, I, I think you're going to see 81 again soon. Okay. Uh, Maybe, maybe not this quarter, but for these, I will go out up to and close to the next earnings. Okay. All right. Fari Hamzi of Hamzi Analytics, who joins us every Wednesday on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Markify. In a much better, happier, more energetic mode today. Glad to have the real Fari back today. And <laughs> I was a little tired last week. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, but it's always a pleasure to be with you. Okay. We'll speak to you next week. Yes, sir. Take care now.